Grace and peace to you on this Father's Day weekend. I hope all the dads out there are getting some extra love and special attention, including this dad. My name is Rich Schweiker. This service was planned as Laity Sunday, so that is why you are hearing from me instead of one of our pastors. Today's gospel reading is from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. The rich man and Lazarus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who may want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Like many of you, I have been stuck at home teleworking for three months. It has been a real challenge. I miss my office. I miss an ergonomic and efficient workspace. I miss the daily rhythms of commuting downtown, walking across Capitol Square, being in my office building, and returning home to a place that used to have at least some degree of separation from work. But most of all, I miss in-person interactions with my colleagues. Likewise, I have, mass, I have missed gathering in person with our Reveille Church family. It has been nice to meet via Zoom each Sunday with the Faith and Family class and each Monday morning with the Men's Prayer Breakfast group. But Zoom is not a satisfying substitute for getting together in person. And I, like many of you, am tired of Zoom. God created us to be in community with others, and it's hard to be apart. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. There have been some positive things about staying at home. My wife and I went from being empty nesters to having two and then eventually all three of our young adult children return home. So they have been teleworking or telestudying along with me. I also grew what was my first and hopefully last beard As you can see, the beard is now gone, the long hair is gone too, but I do still have some hair. Uh, In case you can't see it, it's just really short. Um, And after about six weeks of lockdown at home, we decided to get a puppy. Now being home with the monotony of teleworking and the responsibility of house training a puppy has led me to take breaks outside. I have spent a lot of time in our backyard And I have noticed things. We have a variety of trees, bushes, and flowers. And I, of course, have always known that. But I found myself taking the time to stop and really look at what's been right outside my door for nine years. While sitting in the grass with a puppy nipping at my fingers, I marveled at the many unique and colorful flowers, including some that the puppy quickly decapitated. And I noticed the very different shades of green leaves in the trees above and around me. 
The contrasts with just this one color were beautiful. I also could hear the birds tweeting, chirping, and singing to one another. For a moment I thought, where did all these birds come from? But I knew they had always been there chirping away each spring. I was just taking the time to notice and appreciate them. Today's scripture lesson is about noticing things around us, not simply the beauty of God's creation, but noticing God's people. Specifically, we are called to notice and not ignore the people around us who are suffering and in need. In the parable Jesus tells, there is a rich man who is not named, and there is a poor man who is named. His name is Lazarus. The naming is important. In all of Jesus' parables, this is the only one in which someone is given a name. And it is not the wealthy and seemingly important person, but the lowly, sick, poor man. The rich man is dressed in purple and fine linen, both very, very expensive at the time, and he eats extravagant feasts every single day. Meanwhile, right at the gate of the rich man is Lazarus. While the rich man feasts each day, Lazarus suffers from hunger and hopes to get the leftover scraps that might be discarded from the rich man's home. While the rich man is covered in expensive clothing, Lazarus is covered in sores, and he could not even fend off the dogs that would come and lick him. Now, as I mentioned, Lazarus is the only person in a parable who is given a name. Jesus must really be trying to make a point here. Naming Lazarus gives him worth. It makes him real. He's not just another beggar on your doorstep. The name itself is particularly significant. The name Lazarus is the Latinized version of the Hebrew name Eleazar, and Eleazar means God is my help. So we have a story of a poor, sick, outcast in need who through the parable is really meant to represent all persons we find in need, and he is named God is my help. We will come back to that. The rich man ends up in hell, and Lazarus goes to heaven. The rich man asks that Lazarus be sent to help quench his thirst and ease his suffering. And when he is told that that cannot be done, he asks that Lazarus be sent to warn his brothers of the suffering that awaits them if they do not change their ways. Abraham remarks that they already have the teachings of Moses and the prophets, and they should listen and follow them. The rich man essentially scoffs at that, acknowledging that his brothers are not listening to what God said through Moses and the prophets. But if someone came back from the dead, to warn them they would listen. Abraham responds that if they do not listen and follow the teachings of Moses and the prophets, they will not act even if someone rises from the dead. So why was the rich man in hell? What was his sin? Jesus does not specifically say. The parable does not say that the rich man abused or kicked Lazarus or that he ordered Lazarus to be removed from his gate. Instead, it seems that the rich man's sin was that he ignored a person who was suffering right before him. It may be that his actual sin was not even noticing Lazarus right outside his own gate. Who is at your gate? Who is there suffering and in need? Who is it that you and I are ignoring? And perhaps of even greater concern, who is it that you and I are not even noticing because we are not looking. Perhaps we need to start with asking, where is our gate? In the parable, it's easy to picture a rich man, a rich man's home surrounded by a wall and Lazarus lying there at the gate. I think Jesus is saying more to us than just look at your doorstep. Today, through television, the internet, news media, social media, and modern transportation, our gate extends beyond our homes, across our city, throughout the country, and over the globe. What do we see at our gate? Right now, we cannot help but see two societal crises. First, there's the global coronavirus pandemic. People are sick. People have died and lost loved ones. People have lost jobs or suffered from reduced income, and we have been isolated staying at home. Second, 
there is the reckoning from centuries of racial injustice and systemic racism that has culminated in acts of police brutality, massive protests, peaceful demonstrations, as well as reckless violence and property destruction. Here too, lives have been lost, people are hurting, spirits have been crushed as many of God's children feel that they are not loved or valued equally as human beings. We know what is happening at our gate, but who do we really see at our gate? Who are the individual people who are suffering and in pain? Are we noticing them? or just aware of some larger societal problems? And what are we doing to help them? Here, God calls us to look and to see them and to act. In the parable, when the rich man wants his brothers to be warned so they won't end up in hell, Abraham comments that they already have Moses and the prophets. Abraham is referring to the law given by God to Moses and the teachings of the prophets. What specifically does he mean? We know from Jesus that all of the law and prophets can be summed up in two commandments. When he was asked in Matthew chapter 22, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus responded, first, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. Second, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And this is really what the parable and our call as Christians is all about loving others as yourself. We want to be noticed and helped when we are in pain. We would consider that being loved. I think that the first and perhaps biggest challenge for us is noticing. With regard to the pandemic, we have been sheltering in our homes. We know there are people who are suffering, but have we looked outside our doors and beyond our gates for them? If we don't see someone there, have we really looked? And have we offered some kind of assistance or comfort to them? We know that there are people who have lost income or jobs who are in need of food. Have we contributed to food banks? Right now, Reveille is collecting food to help the Pace Center restock the depleted VCU Ram food pantry. The Pace Center is a United Methodist ministry on the VCU campus and is led by one of our former pastors, Katie Gooch. You can help by dropping off food items in a bin outside the Welcome Center door. Other people are in need in different ways. Have you considered helping a work colleague who might be overburdened with trying to care for and teach young children while also trying to work from home? If we are able, have we given money to financial assistance programs, such as Reveille's Congregational Care Fund or welfare fund that specifically are designed to help people who are struggling financially? Have we reached out to see how someone who might be struggling is doing? I think noticing is even more important with regard to racial injustice and combating systemic racism. I think it demands more work and effort from many of us. For those of us who are not minorities, we must look not from our own perspective, but from the perspective of those who are. Do we see the suffering and pain of our black brothers and sisters, as well as other minorities? Do we try to understand that symbols, names on schools and roads and monuments have meaning, that they can make someone feel less than a child of God? Do we seek to understand why people of color may fear interaction with law enforcement? Have you taken the opportunity to engage in the ongoing, ongoing discussions we are having with members of our partner churches in Swansboro? What do we see when we look out our gates through the eyes of someone else? And then, do we heed the word of the Lord through the prophet Micah to do justice and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. It was important to Christ in the parable to give the poor man, Lazarus, a name. He must be noticed, he must be valued, he must be helped. Have you noticed that in the recent demonstrations regarding the murders of black individuals, the chants have included 
say his name or say her name, they must be noticed. They must be valued. And we must help address the continuing problems of systemic racism in our society that have allowed those names to be ignored or not even noticed. As I said earlier, the name Lazarus, or Eleazar in Hebrew, means God is my help. And there lies our hope, and really the world's hope for moving forward. How does God help people in need? It is by the Holy Spirit acting through God's people. We are called to love others and to help them. But again, it all starts with noticing people in need, and we have to want to look for them. We must be attuned to the problems and challenges around us. Our church is named Reveille. Reveille, of course, is a signal sounded on a bugle to wake military personnel and to call them to duty. It comes from the French word Reveille, which means wake up. As Reveille Church, we're being called to wake up and take notice and fulfill our duty to love others. We do not want to be the rich man in the parable who ignores or does not even notice someone who is suffering. Maybe a simple acronym will help us remember to look for people who need our help and compassion. Have you heard of the acronym FOMO, F-O-M-O? It stands for fear of missing out. It's basically a social anxiety where you're afraid that others might be having fun or doing something um, without you, so you're afraid that you're, you're missing out on something. This fear is spread with the proliferation of social media where people can instantaneously see friends or other people um, in their current activities, at parties or social gatherings. It's not really a good or healthy thing to be constantly worried that you might be missing out on a good time. What if we worried about something else? What if we worried about not seeing others in need? I challenge us to think of FOMO, F-O-M-O, as something else, as standing for fear of missing others. We should have a healthy fear of missing those around us who are suffering due to the pandemic or lingering racism. We should be on our guard to look for whomever may be outside our gate, suffering and in need of our compassion understanding and help. And we should be concerned if we are not noticing anyone. Amen.